Hello everybody, my name is Matt Sowerby. I am Church Action on Poverty's Digital Poet in Residence. What that means is that every Tuesday for the majority of this pandemic, I'm going to be putting out content, uh, sometimes poetry workshops, sometimes performances, sometimes maybe something else. We'll see. It's all part of Church Action on Poverty's On the Fringes project, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later. But for now, I'm just going to do a poem. This is Breadlines. Give us this day our daily bread. So said the unfed, give us it because the baby's half dead. Because when Susie's heading to the bank, she doesn't mean out west. There wouldn't be any point anyway. See, they have crops the Lord's prayer. They want one thing from the divine, daily bread. Hence why when we talk about poverty, we call it the bread line. But well, £1.85 means you're buying some red wine and the Daily Mail's headlines and vape mines like... Headlights. And on the corner near home bargains, Aidan waits on the paves. He'll gladly accept your coppers, but is desperate for change. Tin cans and plastic bags lovingly arranged, he tells me, this is a food fight. This is a Hunger Games. And little Benny's tummy is rumbling, he calls out to eat something, and mummy's coming, but in her hand she's carrying nothing. And he's crying again. Off he goes, but little does he know that his mum hasn't eaten for three days in a row, and sometimes he hum sometimes... I hope that I'm seeing fake news on the television. Because what I'm seeing is so shocking that I want it to be fiction. Then I hear complaints from my mates when even the snacks out of date are out of their price ranges. And I don't mean to make this an issue of religion, but with these prices still rising and these fruits remain forbidden, I'm not a cynic. But it's ridiculous. When the 1% are still fattened up like chickens, how is this still an issue in Britain? How here do 8 million still struggles get food into the kitchens? And why are those worst affected, including 1 in 5 children? And yet these issues are still hidden. These stories remain unwritten and nobody is listening, but the thing with Pandora's box is that there's still hope within it. And that hope comes from times when I've seen people looking out for their neighbours, even those normally cautious with their wages, and yet when I see people collecting donations, it's not the suits that are paying up, it's the teenagers. Random acts of bravery every day by the nameless, so... Forget God, because I reckon that 5,000 can be fed without divine intervention. So, give us this day our daily bread. Or, at least give us the means. Because we'll manage the rest. So that was uh, Breadlines. I said that I'd tell you a little bit more about on the fringes project and um, what that is so like i said every tuesday i'm going to be putting out workshops and performances and that kind of thing um on all of church action on poverty social media but there's something that i wanted for you, from you as well see here at church action on poverty we're trying to build up a body of work of poetry that's exploring uh food poverty and specifically what's happening with food poverty during the coronavirus pandemic um and as part of that, I'd like your stories. I'd like to hear from you about what's going on with you and maybe if you'd be okay with it, uh, we could work together to try and turn that into some poetry um, and then see if we can do something with it and bring about some actual change, uh, which is quite exciting. So yeah, you're going to be hearing a lot more from me if you're following Church Action on Poverty in the next few weeks. So uh, yeah, if you want to get in contact with any of your stories, then I'm going to leave my contact information below and... Yeah, I'd love to hear from you soon. Cheers.